What's up everybody? Welcome back. Today we are going to make a Windows form application that is basically mimicking the calculator that comes installed on Windows. So we're going to basically recreate this calculator using buttons and text boxes on our Windows form. And by the end of this video we'll have something that's working that lets us divide, multiply, subtract, and add. So the very first thing we need to do is design our calculator. I'm going to use buttons for basically everything. We can also use a text box for the, uh, the text part at the top, but primarily this will be a button based application. So let's jump in here and add a bunch of buttons and get it looking pretty close to how the Microsoft calculator looks. I'm going to drag my button to be about that big, maybe just a little bit bigger, and then I'm going to hit Control C, Control V, and notice how Visual Studio has these lines that come up that helps us align different items with each other, so that's, that's pretty helpful. Okay, and, and then notice that the zero in the Microsoft calculator takes up two spaces on the width axis here. So I will expand that. And then we need some buttons here that are just slightly bigger. And then this final button here is the equal sign and I'm going to drag that down until we get something like this. All right. Now we need to go through and actually add the correct text to them. So I'm going to go over here to the properties window and start labeling everything as fast as I can. Uh, let's see here. Seven, eight, And then if you go over here, I'm going to um, highlight, see I'm, I'm selecting everything here, and then I'm going to go to the properties window and under font, I'm going to hit the plus button to get more options. And here I'm going to say font size equals 18, that way everything is a little more readable. And when you look back here, See, the font is bigger and more readable, which is a lot nicer. And now we need a text box and a label above these buttons. And if you look back at the Microsoft calculator, where this zero is, that will be our text box. So when we type five or any type of number, that will be updated in the text box. And then when we start putting other operations together, like 56 plus eight plus nine, see notice above this, this number here, there's a smaller bunch of numbers that's basically calculating the things we've typed in before the current value. You know what I'm saying? So if, let's keep on adding things, you know, minus eight plus two times. See, the more things I put, the more gets added up here. So we will use a label that basically just puts the current value of all the operations we've done, and then the text box will hold our current value that we've typed in that we haven't yet put into that calculation. So if you notice, that's actually the difference between CE and C. If you press CE, it only clears the text box, but if you press C, it clears the value above the text box and this value here. Okay? So let's go back. I'm going to add a text box. And I'm going to make this text box read only. That way the user can't put letters or like mess around with the value in there. We'll just make sure that the only thing that goes into the text box is whatever button has been pressed on the form. So let's find read only over here. Here it is. I'm going to set that to true. And then last but not least, we need a label above the text box. See it right here. 
I'm going to put the label right here and I'm going to name this label over here in the properties window I'm going to name this from label 1 to label current result because this will store the current result of everything we've typed in and I'm going to set the text on this to nothing because we don't want to see this until we start pressing operators to add things together okay so nothing in the text and I'm also going to name the text box so click the text box to get access to it or see this drop down menu here you can see everything that's on the form here so here's all the buttons we have 18 buttons here's our label and here's text box 1 I'm going to click that and then rename it to text box result and I'm naming the label in the text box because we'll want to specifically access these in code so when you start using a bunch of auto generated names it starts to get confusing when you're coding and I'm going to set the text of the text box to start at zero because that's what Microsoft calculator does too okay <laughs> now I'm pretty sure we're basically done with all of the properties work we need to actually link these buttons to events just like we did last time but think about this for a second do we want to make a different function for every single button a lot of these buttons are doing the same thing like the number buttons all we need to do is just take whatever number is in that button and then we'll repeat the same code so I say let's make one function that's called for when the numbers are hit and we'll link all of the number buttons to the same function so let's go ahead and go to our code view you can go up here to the solution explorer right click form one and say view code we're going to create a new function and it's going to be just like the function we wrote last time that um, we used for the button click it's going to look similar to that we're going to pass in the same arguments so let's say private void and whenever you use the keyword private that just means the only person that has access to this function is this form all right we'll we will um, talk more about private and the other keywords there in a later video so don't worry about that too much so we're going to say private void button underscore click we're going to ask for a object called sender and this will be whatever is calling this function so if we press the one button the one button will be our sender all right and an object is just a class that basically everyone is right anything on your form is probably an object all buttons are objects all text boxes are objects okay that's just an easy way to deal with a lot of items with one word all right so the second thing we need is event arguments let's say event args e and we won't actually use that but um, that's the standard thing that we pass in to functions like this so don't worry about that it's just we're doing it because it's a uh, custom you could say so now we have a function called button click and let's go ahead and link this function to the buttons that we have in our form so let's go back here to design view and basically every number button and the decimal button down here needs to be linked to this event so to do this easily just select all of them like this drag a box over these buttons all of them will be selected let's go back to the properties window and click the lightning bolt to get to the events view and here on the click event we'll hit this button right here and here's our button click function we can link to the click event click it and we have successfully linked all of these buttons so whenever any of the number buttons or the decimal button is clicked this function will be called so let's go back to our form1.cs file and we will need to declare a few variables up here at the top whenever you declare variables outside of functions up here they're called global variables 
and any variable that's global can be accessed in any function inside of this class. So see we're working with a class called form1, that's our calculator form. Any function in form1 can have access to these variables. In the past we've defined variables inside of functions and when we do that the variables are called local variables and they can only be accessed within the function you write them in. So let's start here. The first thing we need is a way to store the result of all of our calculations. This will be the number that we kind of use to work with the label that's above the text box. And before, in the past, we've always used ints for this, but ints do not work with decimal numbers. Ints only work with whole numbers, and in our calculator, we want to have support for decimal numbers. So there's a new type of variable we can use called a float and a float just stands for floating point number. Let's call this result because it's storing our result. The next thing we need to have is a bool called is operation performed. And if you notice in Microsoft's calculator, whenever you hit one of the operator buttons, the division, multiplication, minus, or add, notice that whatever is in the text box does not clear out until you hit another number button like this. Then it gets cleared out and you add the new number one. So we need a bool that gets set to true whenever we have used an operation button and then whenever we click a number and that bool is set to true we will clear the text box to make way for our new number. Okay? So let's make a new bool for that. Next we need a way to store which operation we're currently performing. If the user presses plus, minus, subtract, or divide, we need to store which one we want to do in a string, and we can use that string to make sure we're executing the right code for the operation we want. So let's say string operation performed, and that should be all of the variables that we need. Now we should be able to start programming our button click function down here. And remember just a second ago I said whenever we hit an operation button we need to set that bool to true and then when we hit a number button and that bool is set to true we need to clear the text box. So let's do that first. Let's say if is operation performed equals true text box result dot clear and this will clear our text box to have nothing in it and that's good because we're about to start putting a new number in it so it needs to be cleared out to be accurate and there's actually one other time that we want to clear this text box and remember if you look back here our calculator starts at zero and then as soon as we hit a number notice the zero goes away to make room for our five so we want to also clear our text box whenever the value is zero. So if operation is performed or text box result dot text equals zero, we will clear the text box. After we've cleared the text box, we should set that is operation performed bool to false because we have cleared it. If we didn't set this to false, <laughs> the text box would clear every single time we press a number. So that's not good. Press enter a few times. And here we need access to whatever button we have pressed. Remember this function is called whenever we hit any of the numbers or the decimal. So how do we know which button was clicked exactly? And we have a variable for this. Sender is automatically filled out to be whatever called this function. So what we can do is we can make a new button called button and remember earlier I said every button is an object so we can say button equals button sender and I put this parentheses in front of the variable 
to cast the object type into a button. And we'll talk more about casting in another episode, but basically no, we cast to convert different types of classes into the class we need, right? So sender is an object, but we also know that the only time this function is called is when a button is clicked something. So this object must be a button, so we can just go ahead and convert it into a button variable here, okay? Next, we need to actually update our text box to add in the number we have just clicked. We can easily do that by saying text box result dot text plus equals button dot text. So <clears throat> plus equals basically means we are going to add this text to that text. Right? It's just a shorthand way of saying this. Let me show you. Don't type this. I'm just making an, an example here. We could say text box result text equals button dot text plus text box result text, right? Because we're adding those two texts together, but it's more cleaner to just use the plus equals, okay? So what if the user presses the decimal button two or three times? If they do that, we'll have two or three decimals in our result. And that's not correct, right? A decimal number only has one dot in it. So we need a way to kind of check for that and limit the user's ability to put in decimals. So let's do that with an if statement. Let's say if button.text equals a decimal, a dot, and our text box result text does not have a decimal in it already, we'll go ahead and add this decimal to our text. Otherwise, else if, else if the button.text is not a decimal, we don't care. We'll just go ahead and add the text like normal. Okay, let's let's recap this one more time. If the button we press is a decimal and our text box does not currently have a decimal in it, right? If it does not contain a dot, let's go ahead and add the decimal to our text box result. Otherwise, if the button we press is not a decimal, just go ahead and add whatever it is to our text box result, right? We don't care how many numbers you put into the text box. We only care about the dot. And you can either keep this exactly like I have it, or if you'd like, we can condense this into one if statement. We can say, if button.text is not equal to the decimal, or parentheses, we are the decimal, and we do not contain a decimal in our text box yet, add it, right? So that condenses it even farther. Just make sure you have these parentheses here to help you kind of see the different cases, okay? We should be able, at this point, to actually add some numbers to our text box. So I'm going to press F5, okay? I'm going to press 1, notice the 0 goes away, it's cleared, so we can put our new number in there. Two, three. I'm going to hit a decimal. Look, it's added in a decimal. I'm pressing decimal a bunch of times, and it only puts one in there for me. So that's working correctly. All right. But then whenever I press any of these operation buttons, nothing else is working. Um, and our, our clear buttons aren't working either. So maybe we should do those next, because those are kind of easy. Let's go ahead and implement our CE and C buttons. Just go back to the design view and double click CE because each one of these buttons will have a custom uh, click function. Let's say here uh, for CE, we need to only clear our text box result, right? We don't want to clear the label above the text box that has the result of everything else we've done before this current input. 
we just want to erase the current input. So let's say text box result dot text equals zero. So we're starting it back from scratch. And then let's go back to design view and double click C. Here's our function that gets called when C is pressed. Here we want to do the same thing, clear our text box result to zero. But we also want to clear our result that's stored above to zero as well. Let's press F5 and see if this works. At least, it, let's see if it clears the text box. We can't really test the results part yet, but five, six, let's press CE, clears it. Six, five, one, four, whatever, press C, you get zero. So it's working. Next, we should probably implement our equal sign function, the function that actually calculates numbers together. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to form1.csdesign. Let's double click our equals button. And here we have that function auto-generated for us. And so here we need to either add, subtract, multiply, or divide based on whatever is inside our operation performed string. Remember this string, based on whatever operator button we click in the future, this string will be set to plus, minus, right, whatever we need to do here in this equals function. So we could use a bunch of if statements. We could say if this, else, else, else. But when you start using a bunch of else ifs, it actually doesn't look very nice. Um, I prefer to use the switch. And a switch basically automatically takes you to whatever you need to go to. It, it's like an if statement. Um, you just pass in this uh, string. Okay, and then you say inside of the curly brackets case quotation plus colon curly brackets break. So basically you can just copy and paste this and I'll explain what this is doing in just a second. Let's make the second one minus, third one multiply, fourth one divide. Okay, so this kind of works like an if statement. It's called a switch case. And basically, whatever you pass into the switch here, it's going to call whatever case matches with what you passed in. Okay, so if the plus is inside of the string, the switch will automatically take us to this case right here and here we can do whatever math we need to do and when that's done it hits break and exits us from the whole thing okay so none of the none of the other cases will get called it will break out and continue the program and switches are actually a lot faster when you have a bunch of different things you're checking for like this so it's a good thing to learn and I think this is a good way a good example to introduce you guys to this concept. So let's go ahead and do our calculations. It's basically just one line. We need to say text box result dot text equals parentheses our current result, which remember the result, if we string together a bunch of different things, like if we say three plus one times three, we would store all those previous operations in the result. So we'll say result plus float.parse text box result dot text. And then outside of the whole thing, we'll say to string. Okay? So basically, we're just adding the result with the current number input that is in our text box. But remember text box, the text is a string, so we use float.parse to convert it from a string to a number, okay? So in here we're adding two numbers together. And then finally, to set 
the number back to the text here, we have to convert the final number to string, and that's what this function does at the end. And the good news is, all we have to do at this point is copy and paste this line inside each case, and then just change the operator. So here, instead of saying plus, we'll say minus. Here, instead of plus, we'll say multiply. And then here, in the final division one, we'll say divide. Okay, so we want to use the appropriate operation based on whatever operator is in our string. And now that we have done the correct operation, we need to store the result of this operation into our result variable. So let's go down here and say result equals float.parse text box result dot text. Underneath here, we will go ahead and set our label current result dot text to nothing. And remember the label above is kind of showing us the running tally of our previous operations. But whenever we hit equals here, we want to go ahead and clear that and display the final result in our text box. Let's switch back to our design view. And note that our clear buttons and equal button have functions assigned to them. And all these number buttons have functions assigned to them. But the last piece of the puzzle is assigning a function to these operator buttons. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to form1.cs and let's write a brand new function outside of this button18 click function. Let's say private void operator underscore click object sender event args e. These are the required things we need to put in the parameter list just like we did last time. Curly brackets and first things first, let's go ahead and cast our sender object into a button because we know whoever calls this function has to be a button. And we will need access to the button's text here in just a second. Don't forget your equal sign like I did. And then we have two different cases here we need to check for. So remember whenever you hit a number and then the operator button in the Microsoft calculator, as soon as we hit that operator button, for the very first time we're already getting some stuff stored up here in this label above. Eventually when we hit another number, we'll have two numbers that we can actually perform this operation on. But right now, since it's the first time we've hit the operator button, we don't know exactly what that second number will be. Okay? So, if we've hit the operator button for the first time, we just want to store whatever was in the input box. Okay, we just want to store the last two things we've pressed. However, if we have pressed the operator button before, and this is the second time or more that we've pressed it, we should actually be performing a math calculation because we have enough numbers to do that. Okay, so there's two different cases. Is it the first time we've pressed it, or have we pressed it more than once and have enough numbers to make a calculation. All right, so let's go back to this function and I'm going to say if result equals zero and if result equals zero, that's how we know we haven't calculated anything before and this is the very first time we've pressed an operator. First things first is we should store the operation we've pressed into our string here. So when we call the equals function later, we know what operation we need to be performing. So we can set operation perform to button.text because whatever is in button.text will be the plus sign or the minus sign, right? And that's what we need to store. Next, let's go ahead and store the result. And right now, like I said, we don't really have enough numbers to make a calculation. So right now our result is just whatever is in the text box. We'll just set that number to our result. Let's say float.parse text box result dot text. And finally we need to set the text of the label above our text box to show our current result 
with the operator we've pressed. Remember earlier when I hit the operator it showed like 5 plus right above the number? We need to do that now. So let's say label current result dot text equals result plus a space plus operation performed. Okay? The result is the number of our past operations, which right, right now it's just one number, and then we're adding the text of whatever operator we've just hit. Last but not least, we need to set our is operation performed bool to true. That way when we hit a number next time we clear the text box. I'd like to hit F5 now and see if this function is actually doing something. But before we do that, we need to link this function to these operator buttons. So I'll go ahead and select all of them by dragging a box over them. Let's go over to the properties window, make sure it's in event mode by having this clicked. And then under the click thing here, let's say operator click. And now all four buttons have the click event linked to our operator click function. Now let's go back to form1.cs. Um, I'm going to just hit F5 now. And let's see what happens. I'm going to hit 5 plus. Yeah. The only thing now is <laughs> we, need, we need to take care of that other case I was talking about earlier. And then I think we'll be able to see some actual calculations. So back here. Let's say else, if we have pressed an operator button before, let's go ahead and perform the calculation on the numbers we have. So now that we have enough numbers pressed and we've hit the operator button, we need to basically call the equals function because that's where we're doing the actual math, right? This is where we're doing the plus and the minus and the, the uh, multiplication. So let's just say button 18. dot perform click and this will basically simulate a uh, click on the button and our function above will be called. So at this point we've calculated all of our previous numbers and operations. Remember that we were storing an operator in that operation perform string and that was just calculated into our result number that's being displayed above our text box. So now that we've done the actual calculation, we can set our operation perform string to the new operator that we've clicked, right? So let's say uh, operation perform equals button dot text. And for the last two lines, we can basically just copy and paste what we had up here. And we'll set our label that's above to the proper result, the new result plus the new operation performed. We'll set is operation perform to true, so the text box gets cleared if we hit the number button later. And I'm pretty sure everything should work now. Let's give it a shot. F5 time. Okay, three times three equals nine. Okay, that's working so far. Let's hit clear. Let's say five times five plus Okay, notice 5 times 5 was calculated up here into 25. Let's say plus 4. See, 25 plus 4 is sto stored up here is 29 plus. Uh, let's say 6 times. Okay, see that was updated. And let's just end with uh, 7 equals. 245. Yep, that seems to be working correctly. And that's basically it. Um, I haven't looked at the running time, but this might have been the longest video so far. We covered a lot of different stuff, um, but hopefully you enjoyed it and you learned a few things. I'll see you guys on the next episode where we'll do a game inside of a Windows form. See you there.